first on BBC One, a new series of Tomorrow's World. Echoes from the dawn of TV. Science unearthed some of the first images ever transmitted. The first ever recording of a television transmission. We reported its discovery back in 1996. This was the original picture from 1933. You can just make out the Paramount Astoria dancing girls. Hardly legs and co, are they? Well now, an even bigger treasure trove has been found. 11 more discs containing recordings of some more of the earliest television. Stand by to see the pictures for the very first time. Time to switch back to the 1920s when technology was advancing in leaps and bounds. The BBC had just been born and John Logie Baird was setting another revolution underway. The eccentric lone Scottish inventor was hard at work. He was advertising for help with his new project of seeing by wireless, the first step towards television. His system was a mechanical one based on just 30 lines, compared with today's electronic 625 lines. One man who's managed to bring elusive images from Baird's system back to life is Don McLean. Back in those days, it was before electronic television, so the only solution that he could find um, to scanning the picture was to use something called a Nipkoff disc. Now, uh, what that is is a, a disc with lenses in a spiral around it and uh, each of the lenses corresponds to one of the lines that you see on the pictures. So when you span the disc, the image would build up, uh, and the faster you go, the more stable the picture would appear. Baird's system worked much like a flicker book, still images shown one after the other, creating the effect of a moving picture. So when's the last time anyone's actually seen these images? Well, uh, here's, the, here's the big crunch, because they actually haven't been seen since the time when they were recorded. Uh, and this is really something which is quite exciting. There were fewer than 100 TV sets in the UK at the time these pictures were transmitted. This is the first time they've been seen since that day. Instead of the 625 almost invisible horizontal lines we have on our modern TVs, you can clearly see the 30 vertical lines of Baird's system. There was actually no sound with these early pictures. We've added a soundtrack of the only identified singer, Betty Bolton. How did you come across the discs? It started with the work I've been doing on Beer's experimental recordings back in the, 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 the 20s. Um, and uh, I was processing those maybe about 10 years ago. Word got out that I was doing that in some collectors who had had these aluminium discs in their collections. It all flowed from there. Hours of painstaking digital manipulation on the discs by Don gradually removed the distortion of the decades. His excitement mounted as the images slowly revealed themselves. The thing to be excited about this is we can now see what television looked like to people in the 1930s. The BBC had to swing into action. It had to find the best technological solution for its new public service television system. When they looked at it, uh, from the point of view of a potential public service, the BBC didn't think it was something that would actually take off because the quality simply wasn't there. Uh, and I think one of the people from the BBC who went along to watch uh, thought it might be regarded as an insult to public intelligence. And I think that, was an, that gave you an idea of the sort of view that they took. The BBC felt Baird had reached his limits, but he wasn't alone. Competition lay just around the corner. By the early 1930s, Marconi EMI had come to the conclusion that, um, from their point of view, electronic TV was the way forward. Uh, and they felt that uh, that would replace mechanical television. A government committee was set up to look at the whole process, so they decided to recommend a trial between the two systems, and that trial took place at the end of 1936 at Alexandra Palace. Complete reconstruction was necessary, so that the building might house the transmitters, control rooms, studios, and all the complicated apparatus of the two television systems. The trial worked on the basis of one week of Baird's mechanical system, followed by one of the electronic EMI system, and so on. 
It was supposed to last for six months, but Baird's system was just not keeping pace with the more sophisticated electronic rival. After about two or three months, it became clear that the Marconi EMI system was just better. A mighty maze of mystic magic rays is all... And so by the end of January 1937, uh, the government decided that the um, Baird system should be dropped. By the magic rays of light that bring television to you. Next tonight on BBC One, Graham and Lawrence are changing rooms in Liverpool. I sense a row brewing and on BBC Two, University Challenge is in two minutes. <laughs>